Hello, people. What is going on? Jay is back on UK soil. He's here. He's here to give his fan reaction to Crystal Palace. Neil, West Ham United 2. Jay, how are you doing, mate? Oh, buzzing, mate. I landed after six hours of darkness of not knowing what was going on in the game. Flew bang on. Uh, I think we took off about 30 minutes into the game as I saw fan meltdown from the lineup, fan meltdown from the performance in the first half and landed to see uh, a 2-0 victory. I could not be happier, mate. How are you feeling? Mm. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Obviously, three points is three points. That's what we that's what we went there for. Mm. That's what we got. Um, you've watched the game back. What did you what did you make of the first half? Yeah, literally, literally just finished watching it back. Um, it was a frenetic first 20, 30 minutes, wasn't it? It was it was front to back from both teams. Uh we could have been 2-0 up, then we could have been 2-0 down. Uh it was it was crazy, really. Um, and once we once the game kind of settled, Crystal Palace looked the better team. Um, and we really, really struggled to kind of impose ourselves once the game stopped being like a game of basketball, um, which was a little bit concerning. Um, things that I thought were good in the first half, um, I thought we managed to deal with them as far as our back four was concerned. I thought Kilman was just the standout performer again. I thought it was yeah. absolutely fantastic. And we, if it wasn't for him, we could have conceded a few in that first half. Um we got cut through a little bit in terms of they set up to counter-attack us. They were very compact at the back. And uh, there was a few individual mistakes giving the ball away, which were costing us big time. Um, I felt that as much as most of the team played well, I thought the individual errors from Mavropanos and Paqueta on the ball, in particular in the first half, were what were giving Palace their chances. The encouraging signs for me when it sort of came to half time was that they weren't sort of dominating us. They weren't all over us. They weren't breaking us down. They weren't having uh, periods of, of possession where they were cutting through us and creating chances. We were creating sort of, we were creating their chances for them, which I've said before, that will happen. That is part of this process that we're going to go through. It's going to be hard at times. It's going to be painful at times. But from my perspective, when we got into half time at nil nil, I'm thinking, okay, fine. We could have scored a couple. We gave them a couple of chances, but overall, nil nil at half time. I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, I think it's very mixed for me. I think mm. there was moments in the first half where we give it away. They looked the better side in the first half, even though mm. we had like half chances. I won't say we had clear cut chances, we had half sort of chances, but half time, nil nil. Um, I was quite happy to get in at half time, nil nil, and sort mm. of reassess it. What do you make of, um, well, first of all, what do you make of the first 15 minutes of the second half and then the subs? Well, this is the thing, right? Because, again, the first 15 minutes of the second half, I thought Palace still looked really good. I thought, uh, shout out to Adam Wharton, who you was, you've been saying for a while. He's a sensational footballer. Like, he just bossed the centre midfield. He really, yeah. really did. Um, and what was pleasing for me in the second half was Lopetegui managed the game really well. And those substitutions just completely flipped the game on its head. And, again, a game which we could have been behind by that time. Um, the introduction of Aaron Wambazaka was an absolute revelation. How good was he on that right-hand side when he came on? Um, from the moment he stepped onto the pitch, he wanted the ball. And when he got on the ball, he's capable of beating a player. Um, that setup for that first goal that we scored was sublime. For him to pick the ball up on the edge of his own box, go around a couple of players, look like he's mm -hmm. going to lose it and lay it off to Bowen as he did, was superb. And I think when it comes to a, a point that you had raised, we didn't have a shot on target, I don't think, until the first goal, which, again, I think is part of the fact that we're still not playing with our full strength team. And you can mm -hmm. see that at times. And I felt that when we go back to sort of chance creation and the fact that we couldn't really create any serious chances, you look at how we were set up. I thought Guido Rodriguez had a good game, but he's not a creative midfielder. I thought he was pretty solid and I thought he did exactly what he needed to do. I thought Paqueta defensively was really good. Um, and I thought he was getting stuck in. He was breaking play up. He was willing to press when he needed to. He was disciplined when he needed to be. But what you don't expect from Paqueta was he just couldn't seem to find anyone. Like, like even when he was sort of not under a lot of pressure, he couldn't really find anyone with a pass. I think that will change. And what I'm happy with is, first of all, Thomas Suchek proving us all wrong and stepping up and scoring and doing exactly what he needed to do in that first game. He justified his selection. Again, he wasn't exactly 
present in the build-up. And I think that's part and parcel of why we weren't creating a lot of chances. It's because mm. when you look at Antonio and uh, Suchek as your nine and a very close 10, um, they're not there to kind of get involved in fluid build-up play. They're there for you to stick the ball in the box to them and for them to score, which is exactly what Suchek did. And Antonio came close to doing a couple of times. So I think that's what hurt us initially is we struggled to get the wingers in the game. Uh, Kudus and Bowen were both kind of non-existent until Bowen managed to score. Um, a fantastic goal as well, by the way. Um, and that's part and parcel of how, A, Palace were set up with that back three and their wing backs. As I said before the game, such a narrow pitch means that we have to play in a certain way. And they just marked Kudus and Bowen out of the game. And I thought they were bright when they got the ball, but they just got the ball like so few times that it was impossible for them to really make an impact. So we had to rely on probably scrappy goals or, or scrappy chances. And we took our chances really well. So the substitutions were perfect for me. Um, again, demonstrated by Fulkrug's run to create a space for Bowen for his goal was exactly what we need for a number nine. And he yeah. looked lively. He looked like a lad who hasn't played Premier League football before. Um, he, he had that chance late on as well. I'm, I even knew the result. I've just watched the full 90 minutes and I'm screaming at the TV for him to smash it first time. And he mm. takes a touch and he smacks it into the side netting. So I think give him another few games, he'll be burying that chance and we'll have, yeah. we'll have no worries about that. So I think it was a scrappy game. It was a difficult game for us to really impose ourselves on. The changes were perfect. The changes gave us the two goals that we needed. And then we shut up shop, which is exactly what we needed to do. So it was a perfect away performance for me in the second half. We weren't brilliant, mm -hmm. but we negated what Palace tried to do. Even when Eze was flowing and playing really well, um, we still managed to sort of keep him quiet enough that we, we managed to stop him from scoring. So, yeah, it was a it was a really tough watch at times. But 2 nil win is exactly what the doctor ordered, really, isn't it? I've got to be honest, I've got to give you some credit. You did call a clean sheet. You said a 1-0. And uh, I was like, I don't know about that. But um, I'll be honest, West Ham the other day, yeah, it was like, it reminded me of old a little bit. Like, they, they had a lot of like moments where they looked like they were going to do something, but the one shot on target is on the 68th minute. Is like, with, with the attacking threat that we've got on the pitch, we should be creating a little bit more. So that's a bit of an issue. But three points is major for us. Um, worst player for you, Jay? Oh, worst player. I think it's a hard one, really, because um, if I very quickly think about who did what in the game, um, I thought the back four were, were as good as they could be. I thought we looked, as I mentioned, we looked vulnerable in the first half. I don't want to pile on Soufal because I didn't think he was bad in the first half, but I thought he looked like Soufal in that Eze started to roast him a bit in the second half and he got hooked at the right time. Um I don't think there was a particularly bad performance. I thought Kudus just couldn't get in the game. And I think it's no detriment to him. I think the reason he couldn't get in the game was because of the way Palace set up. And again, we go back to him playing out of position. Um, he was playing on the left wing. He's not a left winger. It worked in the first game. It didn't in the second game. When a team sets up with three at the back like that, with their wing backs tucking in and making it impossible for him to get into the game, he really struggled to impact it. I don't think he had a bad game, but I think he was the player who was the most absent for me is what I would say. Mm. Best player. Kilman. Mate, cut, cut and dry. Kilman was absolutely sensational. Yeah. Everything that he did uh, defensively, stepping out, getting on the ball. He was confident. He was assured. All this chat from Wolves fans before that he's not the confident defender. He'll be good defensively, but he needs a leader next to him. Mate, he stepped up in a, in a tough away game yesterday and he commanded that back four like he's been playing for us for years. Especially in the first half. In the mm. first half, I've got to be honest, I was looking at him and I was thinking, he, he don't look like he's going to make no mistakes, but the, the other two next to him, like, could have done. Do you know what I'm saying? With Memphis yeah. Pellas and uh, Sufal. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree. He looked like a £40 million defender yesterday. Like, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think the price tag warranted uh, it yesterday. Do you know what I'm saying? And 100%. I think, I think what it is with uh, Kilman is where people have seen the price tag. They've seen Wolves. I'm guilty of it. I, I've got to own it. Um. I've looked at him and I thought, is he really worth £40 million pounds to, to us? But yesterday, I thought he was excellent from mm. start to finish. Dominated in the air. I think the pass into Bowen for the second goal is a touch of class. Beautiful. Like, we haven't had a centre-half centre do that ever for a long time. So, yeah, listen, I thought he was excellent, mate. Um, what about Lopetegui? Mate, I, look, so we look at the lineup and we'd all sat there and said, we need to make changes. We need to do this. We need to do that. And... 
I think we were all concerned looking at that lineup at the start of the game. But you look at the way the game went, and I thought it was a brilliant away performance. Um, I, I and the thing that I keep thinking of is, look, he knows these players and he knows what's going on in training better than us. This is a process. It is going to take a bit of time. Um, and he got the substitutions bang on. He got them absolutely 100% right. So he managed the game perfectly. And we've come away from a place where, as you've said, we shipped a lot of goals in the last two years. And we've come away from there with a clean sheet, a 2-0 win. And suddenly, I had said before, if we come away with two points from our first three games, I'd have been delighted. And we've yeah. come away with a win from Sellers Park. And suddenly you you look at the, the City game now and you go, that's another, just just another game where it's part of the process and it's going to be another sort of learning learning journey on that game for me. So I think the he did only, really, really well. The only thing I will say, Jay, is mm. was the lineup, but like in hindsight, the, right, the lineup looks like it's right. But mm. for me, right, personally, and a few others, they look at it and think, well, on another day, if one of them goal, one of them chance goes in for Palace in that first half, mm. it's a completely different game, and really. he's getting a lot of stick. Like, yeah, how did, it, he, it, it, how did, you, how did you go around it against Man City? Because you can't go with that lineup again, surely. I think what we do is in in a Bournemouth game on Wednesday. I think he needs to chuck those uh, new signings in. He needs to, he needs to just play all of them for me. Um, give him 60 minutes, give him an hour, uh, give him 60 minutes is an hour, um, give him 75, give him 90, wh- whatever. Give him that chance to get fully fit. You see, Guido Rodriguez has progressed. Wamba Saka looks brilliant. Kilman's playing brilliantly. Um, Somerville, I want to see him start against Bournemouth, and I'd like to see Falkirk start as well. Um, mate, I, I, I don't think there's a world where we get a result against City, but I want to see signs of progress again. So I'm happy with it, mate. As we say, with hi- hindsight's a beautiful thing, but we could look at the Villa game and say, if we'd have nicked that goal in the 97th minute, we'd be looking at that going, yeah, the lineup was fine. Like, ultimately, we got a result. So it works both ways for me, and I think it, he's been vindicated in his stubbornness or or his sort of patience if you look at it this way his patience mm. to bed these players in he's been rewarded with a 2-0 win so as long as he keeps seeing signs of progress i'm happy mate i think he's done well mm. basically to round this up then so by come man city if for example he goes with the back four again mm-hmm. does that justify it to a point i i don't know and and if you're mavropanos yeah he he gave the ball away a few times uh, in yeah. really dangerous positions and he'll get punished for that against City. Like, I again, I haven't seen anything back. I'm about to sit down and watch match of the day to see the goals. But that, I mean, from the scoreline, it looks like they were pretty brutal against Ipswich when they got their chances. So you can't afford to do that against Man City. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts with a back three, personally. Yeah. And he starts Mavropanos and Tadebo to try and be a bit more solid because I don't expect us to have much of the ball. I don't expect us to get anywhere near him. So if he starts with a back three and we go in nil-nil at half time, we know we've got the bench where we can change games. So yeah. for, for me, I'd be happy with him changing the formation. It, I, I wouldn't be overly against it if he starts Mavropanos, but I think he will get punished. I, I'd feel really hard. I'd feel really harshly treated if I was Mavropanos having just kept a clean sheet away from home in a mm. game where defensively he was pretty good. Um, I'd feel a bit hard done by if you get dropped. But but know. what about Sufaldo? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have started him against against Palace, and, and I, I I don't think there's a world that you can start him against Man City. For for me, like. We've proven before when he came up against Jeremy Doku last season, he got absolutely roasted. If he's yeah. got Doku and Savinho as the two wingers that are going to rotate against him, he's going to get destroyed. So for me, that is the game where you throw Wamba Saka in, regardless of what's just happened, because he looked so assured. He looks so good defensively and he looks so good on the ball. And we're going to need that presence against City. So for me, that like that change, I think, should happen. I w- I'm I'm 50 50 on whether I'm whether I'd want to see Tadebo come in for Mavropanos. Personally, I'd like to see a back three, but you know, mm. that's, that's uh, give me a rating out of 10 for Lopetegui. Um, I think, mate, I, I mean, for a 2 0 win away from home, I, I don't know how we can, can really criticize him. Like I say, hindsight's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna say nine out of 10 for me. I like we we looked at that game as a potential massive banana skin for us in the first sort of three games. So for me, I'm delighted that he's vindicated for his team selection. He got the substitutions bang on. He managed the game perfectly. This is another step in in terms of getting these players sort of fully match fit in Premier League football, bedding in new signings. I'm delighted, mate, personally. Um, I understand the, the 
criticisms of his team selection and what could have been, but what happened was West Ham went away from home and won two 0 and and that's all I asked for at the end of the day. I think to round this video up, I understand what you're saying. I really do because I think the bench won us the game, mm. right? So to having a bench option is coming off, uh, won us the game. But I do feel that like he, he's going to have to change this around, especially with the Soufal situation, right? Mm. No, and it's no disrespect to Soufal, but I will be honest. Like Wembasek is a better player, yeah. he's better, he's younger, he's better defender. And that's what it is. And this myth that people say Amber Saka can't go forward, <laughs> uh, he very much can. So, yeah. you know, I, I want to see him in there. Yeah. Uh, Mav is a 50 50, toss of a coin. Yeah. But for me, I think to me, he's, he's a better player. So, yeah, listen, against Manchester City, if we play 3 5 2 or 5 3 2 or whatever we play and we try and shut them down and then hit them on the break, then so be it. But. It's it's a free hit, Man City. Now that's one thing I will say. It's a free hit. Whereas if you'd have asked us that beforehand, we might have had to say, "Well, we're going to have to get a point out of City." Like mm. now, it's a free hit. Well, whatever happens, happens on the day. So hundred percent. Yeah. Um, right. That's been Jay. That's been his video. That's been his fan reaction. He'll be back in the week to probably do a preview with me, uh, as Lucas is absent uh, due to work commitments. But um, special like on the video. Subscribe to E Twenty Zone TV. Hit the notification bell. And that's us done. West Ham win in South London. Uh, bye.